it's Meredith with Love and Big Candle Company and it is raining here in East Texas. It is cold. It is nasty. So I have decided to bring you along with me. I'm in my studio and I want to show you all the tips and tricks for Lola and Voo candles. Uh, if you love Lola and Voo candles, hang out with me for a little bit and you will get to see exactly how I make the candles you order. Or if you're a beginning candle maker and you, you're starting out like I did two years ago and you don't have a clue, let me share with you everything I've learned. And so I think we can get that all done um, watch to the end of the video and I think you're going to learn a lot. So let's get to making some candles. Okay, so first things first. If you are a new candle maker, you're going to want to make sure that you have all of the necessary equipment that you need in order to start your candles. If it's just for yourself or if you're, you're looking to start a business. So I just kind of want to run through that with you really quickly. The first thing you're going to need to decide on is your wax. What type of wax you want to use. If you've already looked into this, or if you're an experienced candle maker, you know there are tons of different waxes out there. Okay, my secret is Lola and Vu uses soy wax. Now, I live in Texas, so if you are a Texan, you know that we can go anywhere in the summertime from 100 to 100 and freaking five degrees. So for my business, my company, I cannot unfortunately ship 100% soy candles throughout the summer. So in the winter, I use 100% soy wax. In the summer, I use a soy blend. So you really need to look at what region you're in, what state you're in. If you're up north, I think you're okay. Well, depending on where you're shipping it. Now, see, if you're doing it yourself for your own home, you should be okay with always making 100% soy wax. As a side note, there are additives that you can put in your candles in order to harden that wax. Um, but I don't, I don't put those additives in my candles. So. Um, look at that. Now, I do have a sample for you. I buy my wax. You can buy, okay, you can buy wax anywhere from a pound bag to literally pallets of wax. Now, I started with a 10-pound bag of soy wax two years ago. I'm now up to a 55-pound or 65-pound, eh, maybe 55-pound, um, box of wax that normally takes me about two weeks to go through. So again, the type of wax you use depends on where you live and or if you're shipping it to other states. Um, and then the amount of wax is going to depend on how serious you are. Um, and by that, I mean, are you a, just a DIY, a DIYer and you just want to make a few candles for your house or are you looking to open up your own business? So nail down those two things. And I have a sample of my wax for you. Um, this is just a sample. I don't know if you can see it good. That's just a sample of my wax. I just cut this off just a, and I'm, um, a corner of it and I'm just going to pop it in my wax melter so while we talk it can be melting down now again there are several suppliers that sell wax so make sure you're going to a reputable supplier in order to get the best of the best wax because if you do get the best of the best wax it's common sense that your candles are going to really turn out top notch. So that's what you want to do. Okay. Next, once you've nailed down what wax you want and what works for you, you want to decide on your wicks. Now, when I first started two and a half years ago, I started out with uh, cotton wicks uh, because there's cotton wicks, there's paper core wicks, there's tube wicks, there's wood wicks, of course, there's an array of different kind of wicks. So I did start out with cotton wicks. I found that cotton wicks for me did not work. I did not like them because they tend to 
in my experience, tend to burn too hot. So about a year ago, I transferred over to Woodwicks. Now, this is what you wanna look for when you're buying your wicks. You want to take your jar and the diameter of the top of the jar, depending on how what the diameter is, now mine is 2.75 across, so that will depend on how big of a wick you need. Um, so make sure you measure the top of your jar and then you go from there. And when you are looking at wicks through a supplier or through Amazon or what have you, wherever you decide to shop, then it will nine times out of 10 say um, large wick or extra large wick or um, it fits from a two inch diameter jar to a three inch diameter jar. So make sure you look in the description box and see how, what type of wick will fit your jar. Okay, woo, okay, that's a lot, okay. Next, you wanna make sure that you have your jars. Now, and I have a, um, I have one of Lola and Boo's jars here. I had a, a hot glue, little spider, so not spider, but a hot glue. <laughs> you know those little things, okay, never mind, okay. So this is a Lola and Vu jar, and let me wipe it down since I've managed to touch it about 500 times. Um, this is a Lola and Vu jar, and I have made sure I've been through, it has taken me literally two and a half years to be happy with a jar. Um, and this is why I'm happy with this jar. It has a very thick, 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 thick bottom, and it's very thick. Can you see that? It's extremely thick on this. So it's a real hefty, hefty, uh, that sounded like a trash bag commercial. <laughs> it's cute. Okay, so it's a really, really thick, stable, sturdy jar. It's not going to break if it gets too hot um, because honestly you're burning, well, you have a fire in glass. So you, you just can't use any glass for a candle jar. So make sure you're, when you're looking for your jars is designated as a candle jar. Okay, so we have our wax, we have our wicks, we have our jars. The next thing you want to purchase is warning stickers. Very, 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 <laughs> very important. You do not want to send a candle to anyone. I don't care if it's your BFF, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt. I don't care. A candle does not leave your shop or your home until it has a warning sticker on the bottom. So, so, so important. I cannot emphasize that enough. Even in my shop, when I have people helping me fill huge wholesale orders, I literally, 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 I look at every the bottom of every single jar. It has to have a warning sticker on it. There are a, var a variety of warning stickers um, and they come in small, medium, and large most of the time. So again, it's personal preference um, on your behalf. What do you want your, your warning stickers to look like? Do you want it to be just simple language or do you want it to be more detailed? Totally up to you. I, on my wholesale candles, have one um, warning label, and then on my regular customer's candles, I have a totally different label. So, again, it just depends on you. So, we have our warning labels, our jars, our, um, our wicks. Now, you will also want to purchase your wick. Can y'all see that? There we go. Your wick holders or stabilizers. Um, I have, there are many different wick holders out there. I love, 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 love this one. If you can find this one, it's got a, a long top on it. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of funky looking. It almost looks like an, a T. Anyway, it holds my wicks perfectly in place every single time. Now, of course, I use wooden wicks, um, but it holds it perfect every time. It doesn't lean it forward or backwards. I don't need anything to hold my wicks. Um, 
So y'all look for these. These are great. I will try to find where I bought these from and link them down below. But when I bought them, I bought a stash of them. So, <laughs> but I'll try to find that for you. Okay. So we have all of that. Now the next thing you're going to want to do when you um, sit down and decide to start making your first candle or um, your second candle or your 1,000th candle, uh, no, back up. <laughs> what you want to do is when you um, sit down and you're serious about making your very first candle, you're going to want to take your jar your wick, your wick holder, and there are two different ways, actually there's three different ways, to um, attach the wick holder to your jar. Now, I will tell you what I do. I, because I've done it another way before and it was unsuccessful, i rather be safe than sorry. I hot glue all of my, and yes, it takes forever, but it, to me, it's worth it. I hot glue all of my wick holders to the bottom of my jars. I have used the wick stickers before and it it didn't work for me. It may work for you, but it just, it didn't work for me. My wick started to slide um, across the glass after the candle was say halfway burnt. And in my eyes, that becomes a safety hazard that becomes dangerous because then the wick starts to burn the side of the glass and that's not a good thing, but it may work for you. Um, so the second way to do it, of course, is the wicks, what they call wick stickers. And all you do is just very self-explanatory. You take your um, wick holder and you stick it on your wick sticker and then that goes down to the bottom of your uh, glass. Okay, third way that I know of that you can um, attach your wick holder to your jar. It, you need to, <laughs> okay, I'll show you here. I have an example. So I've, I've got my wick. I have my wick holder. Okay, so now I'm all together. I'm going to dip the bottom of this in hot wax. Okay, so after I've dipped this into hot wax, I'm going to then, and it, of course this already has a wick in it, but then I'm going to attach it to the bottom of my jar and proceed to let it dry. To me, just my opinion, but to me this doesn't seem very stable. I mean, maybe it works for a lot of you out there, but to me it just... I've tried it once and I got frustrated and I just, again, I'd rather take the extra time, know that my wick is stable, my, my um, wick holder is stable to the bottom of my glass. Okay, let's move on. <sighs> Next, um, you're going to want to decide on, you're going to want to decide on who you are going to get your candle fragrances from oils, essential oils, fragrances. I am not ready to give up my supplier yet because let me tell you guys something, I have found an amazing supplier. I have tried lots of suppliers and I have, I have found my person. And so Lola and Vu candles smell like the real deal, if you will. For instance, today we're going to be doing oatmeal cookie, and our oatmeal cookie candles smell like really hot oatmeal cookies coming out of the oven. It doesn't smell like alcohol. It doesn't smell like um, uh, nothing. Some candles smell like nothing. Um, it doesn't smell like just not what you would expect it to be, if that makes sense. Let me give an example. I ordered lavender. You would think lavender is a world-renowned scent. I ordered lavender from someone other than, stupid me, my supplier. I got it in and I opened it up so excited about it and it smelled like palm olive soap. True story. And so I had an order to fill that day and I literally had to email my customer and <laughs> tell them that I could not fill their order on time because 
the lavender I ordered smelled like palm olive. So, I mean, this stuff really happens. Here's another tip for beginners. If you find, because I know that when you're starting out, it is... Well, God, I mean, owning your business altogether. You're trying to save money. You don't have a lot of money to just throw on um, fragrances. So you try to find the cheapest that you can find. But I am here to tell you that if you find somewhere or a supplier that has cheap fragrances, cheap meaning the cost, run, 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 run away from them. And this is why they're probably more than likely, I'm going to break it to you. They're probably watered down fragrances. I know. Lola and Vu does not cut corners on our fragrances. We don't cut corners on much of anything, but on our fragrances, no, 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 no. I can't tell you where I get mine, but I will give you some good ones out there. Nurture Soap, amazing. I have a coupon code. I will link it below. I'll find my coupon code. Um, Brambleberry, amazing and unique scents. Oh gosh. Um, Wholesale Supplies Plus, I think they have free shipping if you spend $30. And I think it may even be $25 or more. Um, fabulous scents. I've gotten several scents from them. Love them. I've actually gotten Nurture Soap scents and dyes. And I've gotten um, Wholesale Supplies Plus. I've never received Brambleberry yet, but I hear they're fabulous. So y'all can't go wrong with any of those suppliers. Okay, so you've decided on your scent. Now, are you going to color the candle or are you not going to color the candle? That's the question. <laughs> so, I have a, a tip for you and I learned the hard way. There are different colorants in this world um, that we are our bath body world of products. Did that even make sense? No, it didn't. Let's just put it this way. There's different colorants for different things in this niche, if you will, in this world. Um, and I thought that didn't make sense either. Take three. There are different colorants for different things. There I go. I'm doing better. I'll get this down. Okay. So, when you are making candles specifically, I'm talking about candles. Because bath bombs are different and soaps are different. So, when we're talking about candles, there I've come across two specific types. That's candle chips, candle dye chips and then liquid dyes specifically made for candles only. Not bath bombs, not soaps. Oh my gosh, that would stain the skin. Um, but candles only. I, I own both. I have candle chip dyes and I have liquid dyes. If you've seen a Lola and Vu candle, you know that um, I get kind of funky with my designs and so the liquid dyes help with that. The candle chips do not, a candle dye chips do not. I only use those when I want a precise color, for instance, coconut lime verbena. I want that lime green, and so I will use that candle dye chip in order to get that vibrant lime green that a dye necessarily won't give me. So, there we go. <laughs> okay, Next, you're going to need something or some way to melt your wax. Now, if you are a beginner candle maker, don't panic. You do not need to go out and buy all these high dollar, you know, melters that you see candle makers using on YouTube. I, when I first started making, I used a, literally a little bitty container and I popped it in the microwave. Of course, not metal. Do not use metal. Do not use, I used a plastic container, popped it in the microwave and melted it that way. Make sure to stir it every, um, say 30 seconds until it's completely melted. And then you can add your fragrance and get it into your jar. Okay. Now, the next year, actually the last year I've been making candles, I used a crock pot. So... There are pros and cons, of course, to every way. If you're making a big batch of candles, um, 
like I had to this past year, it takes forever. Now, it's a good way to um, keep your wax hot while you're making that big batch. And it's also a good way to make sure that you're not going to burn it. You can always turn down to low and just kind of have it waiting on you. Um, if you're a candle maker that has, you know, large orders and you need product quickly, um, I think that's the area I have now moved into. I have this and I absolutely love it. It's a wax melter. I'm going to shoot y'all down, point y'all down. You will see that. And there's actually hot wax in here, so I'm trying to be very careful. But this is called Soy Light. I believe it's a six quart, which I'm telling you I'm going to need a bigger one, but I love my six quart. And all that needs to happen is you put your wax in, you turn on your temp, there's a, um, a little plug-in that goes along with it, and then you'll put your... Um, container underneath your spout and you will turn on of course I'm not going to do it right now turn on your spout in order to release the hot wax so again if you're new don't panic you don't you don't need one of these fancy snancy things you can you can do it in the microwave okay okay so I'm gonna move our wax over plug that back up I think we've got through almost everything. There's two more items. Okay, three more items. <laughs> three more items that you have to have, okay? Well, two you want two you want to have, one you have to have to have to have. Okay. The first one that you have to have to have to have to have is a thermometer or oh just an infrared thermometer, excuse me. Um, no, I did not start out with this. I just used a candy thermometer when I first started Little Envu Candle Company. Um, but now I need to take, uh, readings of how hot my wax is quickly. So I did move to this one about a year and a half ago. And I'm sure you're all familiar with these. They're sold on Amazon. I believe mine was like $14.99. And you just shoot... Let me show you guys. Let me pull this back up here. Easy. Can y'all see that? You just shoot what you want to read. Ooh, my wax is hot. Can y'all see that? I'm at 220 right now. And I do not want that spilling on me. So I'm going to back that up. Oh my God, I'm going to back that up. Sounded like that song. Back the thing up. Okay. Um... So you have to have to have to have a thermometer, whether it's a candy thermometer um, or it's one of these fancy snancy infrared thermometers. Sometimes I'll take my husband's temperature with this and I don't think that's good, but y'all don't tell him. There's probably a law against that. Okay, anyway. Um, then you have to have, you don't have to have, it's nice to have. A lot of candle makers will have like 50 of these <laughs> because they have one for every scent. Um, so it's totally up to you. If you're making large volumes of candles, maybe that would be good for you. Um, I actually just have one. Um, my candles are literally made the day they are ordered and shipped out within a couple of days. So I don't need 50 of I may one day, I hope. <laughs> But for now, I don't need those. The, the and because the reasoning behind it is it's very these are I would say pricey. Like this one was twenty eight dollars. That's pricey in my world. So um, if you want to buy one and move up, you can totally. That's a personal preference. Okay, next. This is my BFF. Like, dear heat gun, I love you. This is a heat gun. If, I'm sure you all know that. Um, especially since I said it. Mine is by Wagner. And I believe I got this at Ace Hardware. And they're actually not too expensive. You would think they're a lot more expensive than they are. I think mine was like 19 something. Um, but you want a heat gun in order to... Um, 
for the aesthetics of your candle, the look of your candle, all the air bubbles that come out, etc. Smooth, beautiful top. Um, if you're a new or a beginner, go get your hair dryer and you can use your hair dryer. <laughs> Um, a heat gun just speeds up the process. I think I'm crooked, y'all. Am I crooked? BTW, this, like, video has no, um, no editing. I mean, I may just do, and that's it, and get this up. So, this this is me in my, my true form, y'all, in my true habitat. So, let's get to making some candles. Today, we're going to make oatmeal cookie. And, um... What I want to do first is just, normally I wear gloves, but this cookie, uh, this cookie, this cookie's going into my house. This candle is just going into my house, so I'm not going to put on gloves. Um, but I am putting on hand sanitizer. And we're going to glab, we're going to glab our glass. Take three. Okay, so you're going to get your your candle jar glass. Um, good Lord, Meredith, why are you put fingerprints all over this? Okay, get your glass. Get your wick and your wick holder down in here, okay? Then you're going to, let me remove that. I'm gonna bring my wax melter over here. I'm going to get my canister and of course this has a spout can y'all see that this has a spout so i'm going to move this spout i'm going to open it up did y'all see that look at that beautiful wax it's so beautiful wax what are you doing wax oh my gosh i think i've been in my shop by myself way too long okay um, now, if you, it's hot to a minute, it's hot to a minute, okay, if you're a new candle maker, um, or if you're researching how to make candles, you're thinking about doing it, you're thinking about opening your own business, listen up, okay, found this out the hard way too, do as I say, not as I do, okay, here we go, on your fragrance bottles, you will see what's called an FP, aka flash point. Now, this has a flash point of 200, which means, let's check our wax, 86. You'll see that. Which means you do not want to pour your oils into wax that's hotter than 200 degrees. Because if you do, this will burn off and your candle will smell like mm, zilch, nothing. No, nah, you just waste all your time. So, I'm going to go ahead, since our wax is at 186, I'm going to go ahead, and yes, a lot of candle makers like measure out, and they're so good. Like, they're so good. They measure on their scale, and then they... I candle from the spirit. <laughs> I don't candle by a book. Um, so, and all of Lola and Boo's, seriously, all of Lola and Boo's candles are triple scented, quadruple scented. Um, and I have been doing this long enough that I know how much I can push it. Does that make sense? Because you can only put a certain amount percentage into your, in the world, a percentage, that was a glue gun, a little stringy hanging by my phone, I swear, percentage into your candle wax, okay, your melted wax. For example, cinnamon. I have red hot cinnamon. I know, because cinnamon will catch on fire, I know that I can only put the allotted amount or cinnamon into my wax or that candle will catch on fire. Now, this is oatmeal cookie. I'm safe with this. I've dealt with it many times. So, here we go. Let me show you. Am I crooked, y'all? Here we go. Okay. So, I'm going to take my oatmeal cookie. I know. Don't panic. This is why y'all's candles smell so amazing that you get from Lola Boo. 
Now I'm going to swirl. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The smell is insane. Okay, I'm just going to swirl it until the fragrance oil has combined with my wax. It's so important. You cannot just pop the oils in and pour it into your container. You have to, have to, have to mix the fragrance with the wax. Okay. So I know that all of this is combined. And since I have a wood wick, here's a trick. Take notes. I have a wood wick. I'm going to pour this over my wood wick so that I get the crackling noises that I want. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more wax. I told y'all a candle from the spirit, so don't make fun of me. I just need a tea tiny bit more. Oh, Lord, help me. Hang on. Okay, let's put this out of the way, this out of the way. Now we have officially, see if I can zoom in, I don't know if I can. We've poured our candle, okay? Y'all don't make fun of my nails, I haven't got my nails done. And my hair is in a messy bun, but who cares? Okay, so I'm going to... Um, get my heat gun. I'm going to get my heat gun plugged in and then we are going to clean up our candle. We're going to let it rest and then we're going to come back, cut the wick and then we're done guys. So give me just a second. I'll be right back. Okay guys. So we're back and I have plugged in my heat gun and we're ready to clean up our candle. Now, a lot of candle makers will clean their candles up after the candle has completely solidified. I don't do that. You know I march to my own beat, right? So I um, want all of my air bubbles out of my candles right away because it irks me when I'm looking at a candle and trying there's air bubbles all. Ugh, it just looks ugly. So you're going to watch me do that right now. Let me point you down. Now make sure that your gun is on high heat and that you stay only on the sides of the jar on high heat. Do not put high heat on top on that wood wick. It will burn it. And do not touch anywhere that you have already used the heat gun because it will burn you. So when I turn, I will touch an area that I have not used my heat gun on, and I will just turn it, and I will stay at the bottom of the glass in order to make those air bubbles rise up. Okay, now when doing the top, when cleaning up the top, you're going to want to put your heat gun on low, and then you're going to come to the top, don't get close to that wick, and you're going to want to clean it up like that, and then we're going to let this sit for at least an hour, and then I'll be back, and we will cut the wick and look at the final product. Hey guys, we're back. It has been a good hour and a half, almost two hours. And so, oh, look at my hair. Good lord. Okay. 
So it's time to check out our candle that we made. Here we go. Can y'all see that? Here we go. Here we go. It's beautiful. There are no air pockets in it. We're going to go ahead and cut the wick. Now, um, you can cut the wick with um, just regular pair of scissors. I actually went to Walmart and bought scissors that are sharper on the top, on the point, than they are in the center because, you know, normal scissors are sharper in the center than they are on the, the top. So, I think these were like a couple of dollars. And so, you're going to take your candle and I always cut at an angle just for aesthetic purposes. I like the look of it. So, you're going to cut... And sometimes a piece of the wick will get there. I just took that out. Now, I want to smooth out my top perfectly. So I'm going to take my heat gun. I'm going to take it on, or put it on low. Let me point y'all down. Put it on low. And we're just going to make sure the top is perfectly level and clean. And again, this is oatmeal cookie. Oh my gosh, y'all, it smells amazing. I can't even tell y'all. So warm, so fragrant. You know, when it's cold, this is just the candle that you want in your house because it gives you the feeling that you're warm and cozy, even though it's like 30 degrees. Well, here in Texas, 30 degrees outside. I'm sure some of you are much, much colder. And so you will not touch this. Let this sit. It should sit up or set up pretty quick like, probably within 10 minutes, and then you're good to go. Um, you, you can do your labeling, or if it's just in your house, you may not want labeling. Uh, but you did it. You made your first candle, and you made your first Lola and Voo candle. So um, that's it. If y'all have any questions, please just shoot me a DM. And I will be glad to answer it or just leave it in the comment section and I will answer it there as well. So, bye guys. Until next time, remember to subscribe, like, and turn on that bell notification so you get notified of when I upload videos. Bye guys. See you next time.